Hello, it's Tim, and it is Sunday, June 5th, 2022, on a rainy Sunday afternoon in the Pacific Northwest. Um, so this is episode five of the Conscious Entanglement series, uh, and today I want to kind of pull some things together. So far, the first episode was um, Consciousness, Heart, and Field, where I tried to um, just outline consciousness as a uh, sort of a frequency uh, tuner, like in the radio. What station are you going to tune to? And the heart is what kind of powers um, the, the flow and the interaction. And then there's the field. And the field is, uh, some people call it God. Some people call it uh, the source. Um, and in, in uh, sort of physics, they, they are people referring to this as the field. And it also, um, there's some, I was thinking about this today, and, you know, they, we're sort of having two perspectives co finally collide into each other. And one is the scientific, um, more Western uh, perspective. And um, this has been coming along for, this colliding has been coming along for quite a few years. And then we also have more of the Eastern side, which is more of the uh, metaphysical philosophy and into psychology. And um, I just find it interesting. I've been, you know, I read the Dancing Willie Masters back in, I think, the 80s and all kinds of stuff. And I, I came to where I am now mainly through psychology. So you have consciousness, you have heart, you have field. In the second episode, um, I talked about breathing and mindfulness, more from the Vipassana uh, perspective of you use breathing as a way to focus, as a way to kind of uh, concentrate your awareness to a one-pointed, single-pointed mind, and you use your breath to develop that skill. And then the second part of Vipassana is um, then maintaining a, a equilibrium, uh, equanimous state of just being a, a, a witness to things and trying not to react, not to become attached, and by just merely observing and making the statement, well, isn't this interesting, then it we're in a posture to merely start to recognize how things develop, how things then present themselves, and then how things move on. And when we start to recognize patterns in our experience, then we can uh, have some wherewithal to reach out and grab that experience. And so part of that is being able to go, okay, we can float this through, there's thousands of things a day that we could attach to and become involved in and become absorbed in and uh, make that more of a predominant experience for ourselves in that moment, in that day. And um, the mindfulness aspects kind of allows us to pick and choose what we choose to engage in, what we choose to uh, interact with, and into in a level to um, manifestate uh, or manifest. Um, and I think it's hugely interesting over the past few years and really now, a lot of people are saying, well, manifest your happiness, manifest your joy, um, manifest more money, manifest the freedom, manifest your lifestyle. And, and I think this is all um, very doable. And so this is sort of my little bend on that kind of, of thing, um, that we use our consciousness, we use our heart to kind of connect to that, that we wish to uh, uh, experience. And um, the heart thing is just recognizing the flow um, that 
when we have a positive and a negative, yeah, um, if we only have a positive or we only have a negative and there's no no flow, we got to have sort of this push pull kind of uh, uh, energy to it. And um, the sort of uh, episode three was the wrathful and the peaceful deities. At another level, you know, there's a lot of fear um, that we can experience that is uh, broadcast out through the news and all kinds of things these days. And I just wanted to uh, have folks become familiar that in a way, um, things that are seemingly negative also have a positive side and they're just two sides of the, of the same coin. And, um, the, where I found this out was the Tibetan Buddhist, um, back, geez, 40 years ago when I was dove into that, they have this uh, metaphor of the wrathful and the peaceful deities. The wrathful deities are these horrific appearance. Um, they chase us all over hell until we get sick and tired of being sick and tired, and then we kind of turn around and face those fears, those demons and anxieties, and go, ah, I have no idea what's going to happen. Um but I kind of surrender to you and let's figure out what this is. And in the wrathful and peaceful deity metaphor is that then this deity changes its form from the wrathful appearance to reveal that it's really a peaceful deity and um, then will uh uh, we have access to those gifts, so they're, they're given to us, and we understand um, some of of how that works, how fear works, and it no longer then controls us. We we recognize that's what it is, and um, I know for myself and in my work in mental health, you know, just getting uh, to a point where you go, okay. <laughs> I recognize this as, as fear, and what am I to learn from it? And then last week was uh, episode four, and I did that time is time and space are malleable, and we went through sort of the memory how you how when we focus on things and become absorbed in the uh, hypnotic kind of perspective, you know. Uh, and this is very simple. So you're driving down down to work, the same route you ever do every day or five day, days a week. And you're thinking about, oh, what are we going to have for dinner? Oh, this would be lovely. I would love eggplant parmesan. And all of a sudden we end up at our place of work. And we know, geez, I don't remember getting here. I don't remember making the left turn and then a right turn going three miles and then a left, another left turn. And here I am at work. We know that we did that, but our consciousness was focused on dinner and our sort of subconscious our, and our body, sort of that, um, I guess, uh, the operating system, that program, that app of driving that we've done for years just took over and we didn't have to think about uh, pushing the gas pedals, brakes, turn signals, wondering how the uh, automatic transmission works. We just got in the car and all of a sudden here we are at, at work, you know, and, and maybe 15 minutes later. And in that 15 minute time, there's a lot of very complex uh, behavior and cognition that has happened without our awareness. We were aware on one level um our body is well enough trained in, in the procedure and the process of driving, and it just sort of automatically happened. So um, take a read into that. I talked about other ideas of time and stuff. So today I just want to put it out there that with this really kind of simple in one way and bit of of uh, concepts here for your consideration that we really then can choose to consciously engage and become entangled wherever we choose to put our focus, 
wherever we choose um, to interact energetically, um, whether that's through our behaviors, whether that's through um, what we have to eat, whether that's how we feel. Um, a little sidebar here. Uh, hopefully, um, and if you don't, there's these three guys named um, Bruce Lipton, uh, Joe Dispenza, and Greg Braden. And um, they're sort of the pioneers of some of this stuff that they call epigenetics. Um, certainly, uh, Bruce Lipton is like uh, the grandfather of, of that. And um, it's really, they've done scientific research and studies where basically um, using your heart, your head, to kind of get some different concepts and then using your heart as the other organ of primarily of, uh, it has a lot more energy to it, um, synchronizing those. And we can really uh, then be able to do what in the past we've called spontaneous healing, um, influencing how we respond to our environment and epigenetics from what I understand in a simple way is how environment influences how our DNA works and how it uh, uh, sort of manifests. Um, and even more so than the environment is using our internal environment, our consciousness, our awareness, and being able to then rework how our genetic manifestations present themselves. And that's, I think, a hugely uh, interesting thing, I believe, you know, from my experience that we're able to do that. Um, and certainly in my uh, mental health experience, you'd see people that were had just, sure, they had perhaps had some horrific experiences, some traumatic experiences, but they had also um, further embellished and engaged and really became that. Whereas you saw other people that had very similar experiences were, were able to move from being a victim to being a survivor to being uh, a person that thrived, that uh, was able to perhaps take some of these, these horrific, wrathful experiences and through their work, their understanding, um, some perhaps therapy, some insight, but basically learning to move from that horrific and traumatic experience from from being a, survive, a, a victim to a survivor to thriving. And um, I've met tons of these, these kind of folks that have learned to survive and survived very well. Um, some have been uh, very... Uh, Dear mentors and uh, colleagues that I would have never guessed that they had been through some of these uh, horrific experiences. But, you know, they are just like these. Uh, they learned to, to change that crap into gold. Uh, and so in a sense, that's a whole uh, alchemy kind of idea. Um, so. I think every moment we choose to engage, to choose to interact and become absorbed in that moment, we have, that is an opportunity. So uh, I, in, if you've been following me for a, a little while, I've talked about creating space. That's one way to uh, do conscious entanglement. Um, and, you know, that we create space for each other, whether it's for a spouse or for our, 
our children or for a friend, you know, um, we get together and have lunch or coffee. We're really kind of creating space for this person um, and space for the interaction, space for the energy exchange. Um, and this can also happen without having to be there physically. Sure, we can jump on FaceTime or our cell phone or call somebody and we create that, that connection, but we can also do it um, through conscious just thinking about a person. Um, I think everybody has, has had moments or times where um, you just think about a person you know, it could be be perhaps a, a, a uncle or your mother or father or somebody that has uh, passed away, and yet you can still connect with them. You still go, geez, I wonder what my dad would do. Um, and, and so you start having a conversation that way. And seemingly, um, you know, you get answers. And in some ways, whether you call that the field or um, perhaps some DNA memory or some kind of psychic energy exchange, whether there's a, a Lee Carroll and Cryon, um, that whole thing, they say we carry around an energy body that's basically about eight feet in a bubble. And uh interacting with people or just walking past the person, our energy field is going to influence them. Um, and in metaphysics, we can do that and create, we can uh, create our bubble to be as big as the galaxy, as big as the earth. And, and we can connect with Gaia and feel our, our heart connect with her and, uh, or connect with a friend that perhaps lives halfway across the world or in a different city or state and just send them love. And so, you know, there's these, um, the whole idea of prayer and, uh, sending vibes, um, is this, is this, I think, basically the same thing. We are using our heart or using our head to focus on the, that person or think about that person, using our heart to really kind of connect um, through the field. And I think uh, there's all kinds of phenomena, events, where this seems to be at least from a, a subjective, experiential um, perspective is certainly possible. There's no reason why it isn't. And from our subjective experience, that's validated. Now, you know, folks go, well, we're all about science. And, and I think science is great. <laughs> I think science and can exist right alongside with metaphysics and they sort of challenge each other and you know a lot of science at least empirical science in some ways is based on let's see if we can do this again let's see if we can have a significant uh, standard a significant uh, statistical result or correlation and um, I think science does confirm or that the process of science and empiricism is to confirm a phenomena and in that confirming it also ask more questions about how does this actually work how do we make this happen um, on the other side you have have this more, I guess, metaphysical, experiential kind of thing, that antidotal evidence, and which tends to hang that carrot or beg to go, well, maybe we better question this. Maybe we better figure this out because there's 
it seemingly happens and, and we don't know. And so I think we're at a really interesting uh, time and moving forward. We have a lot of technological advances, uh, AI kind of stuff, all kinds of really cool stuff uh, to help uh, document some of that, uh, gather a database of, of that. Um, and over the, over quite a while now, I've kind of wrestled with the whole idea of AI, uh, artificial intelligence and all this other stuff. And, and I've kind of, my conclusion is, which I leave open to, geez, there could be a better explanation, or so I'll discover something here in another few months, few years. Um, basically, but where I'm at now is, is AI is great for processing within an operational system. But the limit of AI versus us human beings, us human beings, we have creativity on our side. We have imagination on our side. We can imagine things and create things out of seemingly nothing without uh, an algorithm or a database or an operating system. I think um, physiologically, biochemistry, you know, uh, we are the hottest computer on the planet. We, we have more technology in our, my 160 pounds, you know, versus, you know, a computer or whatever to be able to carry around this in 160 pounds would be uh, phenomenal. Uh, I don't think uh, computers, uh, the AI, the digital realm will get us there. Sure, I would love to have a self-driving car where I could jump in the car, zoom down to Seattle, and take a nap while I'm going there. That would be fantastic. I'd arrive, see friends, hang out, rested and ready to go. That'd be a wonderful thing. <laughs> and so, geez, if AI can help me uh, uh, get me to where I'm going and I can take a nap, I'm all for that too. Um, I think there's a lot of technology that could, can, if, if we use it to enhance um, our experience for humanity on this planet um, to make it more equitable and things like that is a is a great thing. Um, so I, I guess uh, I just want to wrap this up. I think I just the, the reason I wanted to do this series is just to get plant a seed to get uh, folks to think about. Hey, every moment we have a chance, we have the opportunity to create our experience, to manifest our experience. So then the question is, what do you choose to manifest? And using your heart, using, you know, this uh, Merkaba, this physical body, this energetic body, or perhaps seemingly uh, psychic uh, phenomena, which, a little sidebar, psychic phenomena. Back when I was a kid, it was considered the devil's work and all this other stuff. Uh, and now, I think in the past few years, at least from what I've seen, there's just been an explosion of that um, discussion of, uh, of saying, hey, you know, this whole channeling thing or tarot reading or... Um, uh, divining kind of thing is like it, it's it's now seemingly coming online. I remember when I was a kid in in Nebraska, they had water witchers, which is basically divining in in a, in a sense. And now, you know, with sort of the the idea of um, Armor Kaba having this body that's uh, a big antenna that's highly sensitive. We're sort of uh, we have some concepts that would allow for us to go. Oh yeah, this makes sense. Sure, you know we'll have to kind of you know practice uh, being a water witcher 
and and we could use a pendulum or we could use a forked uh, twig or something like that. But I think things such as channeling uh, the whole discussion of stepping into the flow, flowing is uh, really bordering and sort of crossing into the steps into that space of metaphysics. And I think that's really interesting. Uh, oh, I could go on. I guess, uh, and this has been around for a while, the, the sort of the theory has been around for a while, and now we're kind of getting to uh, a step beyond just the theory and let's and asking how do we conceptualize this? And then once we start conceptualizing how this works, and I'm just presenting for your consideration, head, consciousness, heart, and field. And um, once we start, you know, going going about this, is is eventually we're going to get into more um, empirical validation um, kind of things, uh, studies and stuff. And and we be, have been doing that for quite some time, and it's been all over, you know, uh, from different angles. You know, you have the remote viewing folks, you have the tarot readers, you have the aura readers, um, you have the uh, astrology, which works on birth charts or the greater galactic movements or planetary movements and stuff. And um, so anyway, I'll quit for now. I think um, I don't know if I'll continue. I think I, I, I will. when If I think of things, I'll put them up here. Um, I need to write something up here. I think uh, today, anyway, will be primarily this video thing because I, I was kind of wrestling with the writing uh, a piece and it's like, oh, I'm all over the place with this. But uh, hey, uh, have a great week. And I am, oh, one other last thing is I'm coming close to the, one of my other little projects and which is really one of my main focus for love change grow is the investment in the future in future generations is with our children and in that aspect uh I put a, together so far a little ebook that I, I'm trying to finish. And uh, I guess if folks are interested here, I'm, I'm going to do this. If you're interested for this next week from today till next Sunday, shoot me an email or contact me through um, the website uh, at lovechangegrow.com. Let me know you're interested and I will send you uh, a draft in a, as an email attachment and um, if you would be so kind I could really use some feedback on this uh, little project you know uh, part of being a writer or doing this is I'm sort of operating in my little hole here in the basement um, and in some ways, I'm like this autistic person with this little world that I swim around in. And, and uh, um, with this uh, project is really what I, I, in a nutshell, saying, hey, this is a way to raise kids, um, is a way to think about how to help them grow have and gather skills where by the time basically they're in their late teens, early 20s, they are set to fly the nest. And I, I break it up, break things up into seven year periods and the and how a 
us as a parent, whether you're a, a single mom or a single dad or or some other type of arrangement, have aunt and uncles, grandparents living with you. Um, I think there's a very um, succinct way to sort of get our head and our hearts wrapped around the idea, hey, let's help these kids to grow, to uh, be able to manifest what they came on the planet for and how to give them a head start on that and uh, realizing you all have your values and your beliefs, um, which are what you're also giving your child to carry them forward. And um, this little project is really, I, I think I got about 50 pages and I wanted to keep it short because I know folks don't have a lot of time, a lot of energy. Um, so if you're interested, shoot me an email um, this next seven days. I will shoot you a draft of that. And if you could let me know your thoughts, your comments, feedbacks, uh, whatever that is. I want the good. I want the bad. I want the ugly because <laughs> that's going to help me to, to, to put this together. Um, at some point, I, I will probably put it out as an ebook uh, for purchase kind of thing because uh, I, I have to pay bills buy food, pay taxes, some utilities. But uh, for the most part, my uh, living needs are pretty pretty uh, low level. And um, more importantly, I, th I would love to put get this out. And I've been thinking about this for uh, quite a while, a year or, or better. And I'm finally getting it together. I kind of like what I've got so far. But again, I really need your feedback. So that offer is open for the next week. Um, and so contact me uh, through the website, Tim at lovechangegrow.com is the email there. There's a little contact thing and just say, hey, I, I want the uh, parenting <laughs> little book and I'll get you a copy. And uh, there you go. So thanks. Have a great week. Bye.